Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson. We're in Unit 9, Logic and Reasoning. Um, this is pretty much uh, why uh, the state of Virginia requires you to take geometry for graduation. Um, we, we decided that at some point in time that we wanted um, students like you to graduate with an ability to re uh, reason and think logically. I think that's a great idea. Um, in this section 9.1, we're going to kind of start this, this process looking at patterns and the idea of what inductive reasoning is. Um, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to ask that you put me on pause and I want you to pull out your student learning map, look at your vocabulary words that are over on the right hand side, pull out your vocabulary words, review those first before going further so that as I talk about things, I'm not having to explain to you what those words mean. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Put me on pause and get that other stuff done and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so you look at your student learn map, it says I can use inductive reasoning to arrive at a logical conclusion. So this is just one example of kind of patterns that we might be looking at. And we look at inductive reasoning, as you know from your vocabulary, inductive reasoning is basically looking at a pattern and coming up with your best guess. So what I'd like you to do is understand that I can give you as many patterns as possible. And if I do all the thinking, then you don't get any better at it. Um, the more, the better you get at doing inductive reasoning comes from your experience with thinking through problems. There's an infinite number of type of problems. And so the game is to wrap your brain around what's going on in the pattern and thinking it through. And some of them can be quite challenging. That's the game. So kind of see it like a puzzle. And, uh, and then I think you'll do just fine. So take a look at these. Put me on pause and see if you can determine what the next... Um, number is going to be. See if you can see what the pattern is. Okay, so I noticed that each term was being multiplied 3 and that was kind of advancing it there. So the next term is 243. Let's try another one. For reasons uh, that later will become prevalent why I did it, uh, I'm going to call this problem number 1 and uh, that's A. Alright, we're ready for the next Okay, go ahead and put me on pause and see if you can figure out what the next shape is going to look like and what color. Now, you're probably writing in pencil or something, so you can just write the color name above it. Okay, put me on pause and see what you get. All right, well, I got uh, a seven-sided figure. I put seven in there because it's kind of funky. Anyway, seven-sided figure, and it should be red. Um, the pattern is, uh, I see this one went green red, black, and then it came back to green. So I'm assuming it's going to go to red. All right. Now this is called inductive reasoning, your best guess. So now when you make a guess like these, right, like this uh, 243 or, um, you know, this uh, circle with the seven-sided figure, that is called a conjecture. That's one of your vocabulary words. A conjecture is basically you're coming to a conclusion based on an inductive reasoning um, way of thinking. So things like that are called statements, and they can be true or false, okay? So I could definitely look outside today as I'm making this tape. It's beautiful outside, so I would call that a false statement, okay? But in any case, uh, what I want to look at is that we can have statements like this said and then come uh, and have a conjecture from it, something that you believe could be true if that was true, okay? So uh, let me give you an example. So let's say this was true. It is raining outside. Here's a conjecture that I could make. The parking lot is wet, okay? So now my conjecture might be wrong, but it's my best guess. And I think that's a probably pretty true statement. Okay, here's another one. I want you to put me on pause and see if you can come up with a conjecture. You're at home and you smell smoke. Write a conjecture. Here's my conjecture. Um, my son is cooking dinner tonight. Now, there's lots of different choices here. You could have said there's a fire in the house. Could be that your mom was cooking could be that my wife was cooking. There's lots of different kinds of conjectures that you could have made. There's not any necessarily wrong one. It just needs to make sense. For instance, if this was your conjecture, my brother is studying. Um, that won't be accepted in this class, okay? It's, uh, 
you could certainly make the argument and you know my brother's brain is being fried from studying but we're looking for stuff that really makes sense right now as we're working through this learning process okay so we want to make sure our conjectures make sense now sometimes we make statements and the statements are false uh, all apples are red and that's certainly uh, false I've seen lots of different color apples some green ones some yellow ones and things like that so whenever somebody makes a statement and it's false then we're required to write a counterexample so a counterexample to this statement would be granny smith apples granny smith apples are green and so what ends up happening is your counter argument is going to show the first thing happened apples but the second thing is what failed okay all right, take a look at this statement. See if you believe it's true or false. If it's false, come up with a counterexample. Okay, so my daughter is a good example of this. She's 16. She does not have her driver's license. Um, that's her choice at this stage of the game, and I, I applaud her for that. Um, but I want you to know that even though my daughter is a correct answer to this, it's not complete. See, you've given an example of somebody, you know, that is, is, does not have a driver's license. But what you need to do is state why your, my daughter is an example. Let me show you what I mean. My daughter, who is 16, doesn't have a driver's license. Get used to it. You're writing sentences in this whole unit. Okay? I forgot my apostrophe. Okay, take a look at this uh, statement here. When we have a statement like this, um, we need to be able to turn it into a, um, a sentence in symbolic form, okay? Now, through a couple of examples, you'll see how this works, and, and of course, through practice, you'll get better at it. I don't want to write all these sentences out, and so if I turn it into symbols, it makes it so much easier. easier. Let me show you what So here's a sentence that you probably know how to turn it into symbols real quick. So go ahead and put me on pause on this one. Go ahead and write that sentence down and then write it in symbolic form. Okay, there I have it, okay? Pretty straightforward. You've been doing this for a long time. This one's gonna be a little bit more challenging, okay? So what we have to do is look at this and, and kind of interpret what this really means. This is saying, basically, if I have an apple, if I have an apple, then it is red. I hope you agree with that. That means basically all apples are red. Now, we already know this statement's false, but that's not the point of all this. What I want to do is I want to turn this into a, a statement um, of symbols. So let me show you what this means. See this uh, then sign there? I'm going to use this symbol. It's an equal sign with an arrow on it. That will turn it into, uh, convert that word then into that symbol. Now I can come up with any symbols I want for I have if I have an apple, okay? So I could write if I have, let's say, an apple. I'll just put capital A. Then it is red. I'll just put down a red. And so now that creates my symbols for that symbol, for that sentence. If I have an apple, then it's red. Now, when I read that, I just simply looked at these symbols to help me remember um, you know how to say it. Now, what we're going to find out later on in the next unit, I don't need the word if. This is standard. This is a standard form, if you will, for a statement that's an if then statement. Let's do a couple more. They're a little bit easier to think about. So I have Paul is in California. All right. So I can create my own symbols as long as I can understand it, right? So I could just use P to represent this statement. I could use P with a little tiny CA there that stands for Paul who's in California, okay? I could do California with a little P down here. It stands for Paul's in California. I don't care, but there's a lot of symbols, a lot of different ways that we could write it. Okay, here's Paul is not in Oregon. So let me show you another symbol that will help us uh, kind of work with the not there. So what I could do is I could put a squiggly line like this and put a P in front of the P, that would mean Paul's not in Oregon. I made it up. I get to make it the way it is. 
the thing I want to show you is that squiggly line means not, right? I could say something like that, and that stands for Paul's not in Oregon, right? Lots of different variations. Okay, so I have the letter K and the letter Q, and I have this funny arrow in between it that's pointing up. This is the symbol for the word and. Okay, it just basically says whatever the statement K stands for in Q, it says K happens and Q happens or whatever, okay? So that's the symbol for and. So the upside down one stands for or. So K or Q. All right, keep that in mind. Hope, keep those notes handy. I'm going to give you a statement and see if you can write it out. The symbols that I have here are from above, okay? Let me extend this up so you can see it. So I have the P from above, and I have that symbol, and then I have that symbol. See if you can write in words what that sentence says. All right, so I have Paul is in California, and he is not in Oregon. Now, you might have wrote the word Paul here, and I want that to be a good time for you to realize we need to make sentences and write sentences and statements that make sense. Um, we're not just writing words, okay? So it would make just no sense at all to write Paul is in California and Paul is not in Oregon, okay? All right, let's see if we can understand this real quick. Negating a statement, okay? So this is what I call the verbal form of my statement. I live in my car. This is the symbolic. I could just write an L. I could write an L with a little car. I could just write the car, whatever, right? And so the negation of that is I don't live in my car. And so this could be the negation of that symbol or the negation of that symbol, okay? Now I'm going to give you one, and I'm going to see if you can write it in symbolic form and then negate it. All right, here's the statement. I don't do my homework. Think of some symbol for it. Write the negation, the verbal, and then write the negation in symbolic form. Put me on pause and see if you can do this one. All right, so I have um, for my symbol not homework like that, okay? I don't do my homework. The negation of that is I do my homework. Now, that looks like a negation of this symbol up here, but as you can tell, this is just silly. But two negatives make a positive, and that's what that statement is. So they'll cancel each other out, and so I'll just simply say homework. And I forgot my W on the original. I don't want that to goof you up, okay? So... Negating a, neg a negating a negation, a ne negating a negative um, symbol makes it a positive, just like in regular math. Okay. Okay. Write your summary, and here's your do it problems. I'll zoom in. I'm going to make a couple of quick comments about each one. So um, let's do that. All right. So on number uh, on the first problem, uh, we're looking for a conjecture on those two A and B. On number two, uh, you're going to write that statement in negation. Number three, write the following symbolic form. Okay. Uh, now, this one, there's lots of different variations, so I don't want you to get hung up on which is right or wrong. You need to, if I was to take your symbols and put it up on the board 30 minutes later, would you still be able to read the sentence? But you want to have a minimum number of letters, one, two, three at the most. And then finally, the last one here, um, pretty self-explanatory. All right, let's see you next time. Take care.